Dear students, now we are going to discuss how wave rectifier and derive its characteristics. Let's start with the definition. How wave rectifier is simply denoted as HWR. It is mainly used to convert a bidirectional AC input signal into a unidirectional signal that is also known as pulsating DC voltage. In this off wave rectifier, we are going to use only one PN junction diode. Hence, this conducts only for the positive half cycles. That's why it is called as half wave rectifier. This is the circuit diagram of half wave rectifier. So, only one PN junction diode is used. The AC input signal is applied to the primary winding of this transformer. During the positive half cycle, here the diode is forward biased. Because input is positive, the diode is also positive here. Then it is forward biased and starts conducting the current. Okay. So, due to this load current, there is a voltage drop across this low resistor. We can take the output across this load resistor which is similar to this input. So, we can get the output during positive half cycle. So, next during the negative half cycle, here the diode is reverse biased because here input is negative, diode is positive. So, it is reverse biased, then there is no current conduction. Correct? We cannot get the output at this low resistor, then it is 0 volt. Okay. So, again during positive, we can get the output signal. Do you all understand this concept? So, here we can get pulsating DC output voltage. Okay. So, that is the half wave rectified output. Here the input signal is represented as Vm sin omega t. So, here Vm is nothing but the maximum voltage of the signal. Okay. The operation is given here. During the positive half cycle, the diode is forward biased and starts conducting the current. Hence, the output appears across the low resistor which is similar to the input signal. During the negative half cycle, the diode is reverse biased and does not conduct. That means, there is no output across the low resistor. So, in half wave rectifier, the negative half cycles of the AC input signal are suppressed. That means we can get the half wave rectified output. Here the output voltage and output current can be represented in terms of sinusoidal signal. So, here V naught is equal to Vm sin omega t during the positive half cycle from 0 to pi. Here Vm is the maximum voltage. So, here output is 0 during the negative half cycle. Similarly, we can get the output current that is equal to the load current is equal to Im sin omega t during the positive half cycle. Its value is 0 during the negative half cycle. Okay. So, these two representations are very, very important. So, next we are going to analyze the characteristics of this half wave rectifier. Efficiency, ripple factor, peak inverse voltage, transformer utilization factor, peak factor. So, let us derive each parameter in detail here. First, we are going to find out the average values of voltage and current. Here, average is nothing but the DC value. Okay. So, average current is equal to the DC current is equal to 1 by 2 pi. That is the total time period. Okay. So, here we have to integrate the output current with respect to omega t. It is range from 0 to 2 pi. So, we have to substitute the value of this output current. Its value is I m sin omega t. So, next we have to expand this range. 0 to pi, its value is I m sin omega t. From pi to 2 pi, its value is 0. Correct? 0 to pi means positive half cycle. Its value is I m sin omega t. Correct? But for this negative half cycle, its value is simply 0. Then we can take this I m outside since it is a constant. So, I m by 2 pi. Here we have to integrate this sin omega t. With respect to this omega t, we can get minus cos omega t. Okay? So, integration of sin is minus cos. The limit is from 
0 to pi. We have to substitute this value here. So, minus cos pi minus of minus cos 0. So, cos pi value is what? Minus 1. Cos 0 value is what? Plus 1. Then, minus into minus plus 1. Here it is minus into minus plus 1. We can get the value as 2. Okay. Then, we can simplify this term. We can get the average current or the DC current value as IM by pi. So, it is very important parameter here. The DC current value is IM by pi. IM is the maximum current value. Okay. The same way we can get the DC voltage value as Vm by pi. Okay. So, next we are going to find out the RMS values of voltage and current. So, RMS values means here we can consider the AC component. Okay. So, here in this one, we can take the voltage RMS value as square root of RMS means what? Root means square value. So, here we have to consider this root as well as the mean of that value. So, square root of 1 by 2 pi integration of V naught square d omega t. The range is from 0 to 2 pi. That complete cycle. Okay. We have to substitute that V naught value here. Then VRMS is equal to square root of 1 by 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi Vm squared sin squared omega t d omega t. Right. So, here we can take this Vm squared outside from this integration. So, here square root of Vm squared by 2 pi 0 to pi. As we know that it is having the value only from 0 to pi. If it is from pi to 2 pi, its value is 0. Correct? Then we can take that limit from 0 to pi sin squared omega t d omega t. Okay? For further simplification, we can use the formula sin squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. The same way we can replace the sin squared omega t as 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2. Then we can take this 2 outside from this bracket. Then we can get Vm squared by 4 pi. Then we have to integrate this value with respect to omega t. So here integration of 1 is nothing but omega t minus cos 2 omega t. So integrating this value then we can get sin 2 omega t by 2. Integration of cos is what? It is simply sin. Correct? So, sin 2 omega t divided by this 2. Here the limit is 0 to pi. In the next step, we have to substitute that limit. So, before that we can take this Vm squared by 4 out of this square root. Then we can get Vrms is equal to Vm by 2 square root of this pi is there, right? So, 1 by pi omega t value is pi minus lower limit is 0. This minus sin pi value is always 0 minus sin 0 is always 0. Then we can get the value as VRMS is equal to Vm by 2. Similarly, we can get IRMS value as Im by 2. So now we have uptime, VRMS, IRMS as well the DC values. Next, we have to find out the efficiency of the software rectifier. Efficiency is defined as the ratio of output to input, right? So, here the output is DC power, input is the AC power. So, it is represented as the efficiency eta is equal to PDC divided by PAC. So, here we have to find out the DC power as VDC squared by RL. As we know that power is equal to what? V into I. It can be written as V squared by R or we can write I squared into R. The same thing, correct? So, DC power is equal to V squared divided by RL. So, here we have to substitute the value of this VDC. Its value is Vm by pi. Okay, we can get the DC power as Vm squared by pi squared into RL. Okay, similarly, we can get the AC input power that is equal to VRMS squared by RL. Okay, so here we can substitute that VRMS value Vm by 2 the whole square divided by RL that is equal to Vm squared by 4 into RL. This is the AC input power value. Then we have to substitute this DC power and AC power values in this expression. Then we can simplify the terms here. Okay. This 4 goes to the numerator. Then we can get eta is equal to 4 pi pi square. Its value is 
0.406. So here we have to represent that efficiency in percentage. We can get the value as 40.6 percentage. So maximum efficiency of the Hoffa rectifier is 40.6 percentage only. So it is a low value. Okay. So next we are going to find out the ripple factor. So this factor is very very important one in rectifier because a ripple represents the unwanted AC component present in the DC output. In the DC output we need to get only the constant voltage but in this rectifier we are getting some AC component in the output correct. So here the unwanted AC component is represented as a ripple. So how much AC is present in the DC output that is known as ripple factor. It is defined as the ratio of the RMS value of AC component in the DC component. Okay. So here it is represented as the gamma. Okay. Sometimes it can be represented like this as well. Okay. Gamma is equal to RMS value of AC component by DC component. So here this RMS value of AC at the output side that is represented as VRRMS. It is not simply VRMS. So whenever we are going to subtract the DC content from this RMS that is the VRRMS value. So we can obtain this value by taking the square root of VRMS squared minus VDC squared. We have to substitute this in this formula then we can get square root of VRMS squared minus VDC squared divided by VDC. Okay. Then we can take this VDC outside for further simplification. Then this term becomes VRMS squared by VDC squared minus 1. Here VDC VDC divided. Okay. Then we have to substitute the values of VRMS and VDC in this formula. Okay. Then the VRMS value is VM by 2. VDC value is VM by pi. We have to substitute those values here. Then here we can simplify this term that is square root of pi squared by 4 minus 1. Then we can get the value as 1.21. Okay. So here we can get 121 percentage of AC component in the DC output. Since 121 percentage of AC component present in the DC output, this half wave rectifier is not practically used in many applications. Okay. So the next one is peak inverse voltage. It is simply denoted as PIV. Okay. It is the maximum reverse voltage that a diode can withstand without destroying its junction. That is the peak of the negative half cycle. Here only one diode is used. Here we can take that negative peak value as Vm. So peak inverse voltage for this half wave rectifier is Vm only. Okay. So next one is transformer utilization factor. Utilization factor means it defines the utilization of the transformer in the circuit. So this factor is defined as the ratio of DC power delivered to the load to the AC rating of transformer secondary. So here we have to consider the secondary winding of the transformer where we can exactly get the input to the circuit right. So here the TUF that is tough transformer utilization factor is equal to the ratio of DC power to this rated AC power. For this rated AC power its rated secondary voltage value is different. The rated voltage of secondary winding is Vm by square root 2. But for this current we can get the half of that maximum current. It, there is no change in this. Okay. So we can get the rated AC power is equal to Vm by square root 2 into Im by 2. For further simplification we can consider this Im as Vm by Rl. According to Ohm's law I is equal to V by R. Right. So here we can say Vm squared by 2 into square root 2 Rl. This is rated AC power. We have to substitute this value in this tough formula. Here it is DC power to rated AC power. Then we have to substitute DC power as Vm squared by by squared RL divided by Vm squared by 2 square root 2 RL. Then we can simplify all the terms as 2 square root 2 
goes to this numerator. Okay, then we can get f is equal to 2 square root 2 by pi square. Its value is 0 0.287. In terms of percentage, we can say 28.7 percentage. So only 28.7 percentage of the transformer is utilized. It is not fully utilized. Okay, this is also one of the major drawback here. Okay, so next we are going to find out the form factor. It is the ratio of the RMS value to the average value. Simply we can substitute that value here. Vm by square root by Vm by pi. Then we can get the value as form factor as 1.57. Okay. Next one is peak factor. It is the ratio of peak value to RMS value. Okay. So here we can substitute the peak value as the maximum voltage divided by the RMS value is Vm by 2. We can get the answer is 2. Okay, the peak factor of the half wave rectifier is 2. So, next one is advantages of half wave rectifier. It is very simple and easy to design. It is a low cost circuit because only one diode is used in this circuit. Okay, so next disadvantages. So, its efficiency is very low. It is only 40.6 percentage. Here, the ripple factor is very high. That is 121 percentage right so it is not practically used in many applications and also it has very low transformer utilization factor so only 28.7 percentage of the transformer is utilized okay this are the major disadvantages of half wave rectifier that's why we move on to the full wave rectifier